For part A of this problem, we're going to revisit the situation in question 6.1. So if you haven't done question 6.1, I suggest you finish that question first. So assuming you know what's going on in question 6.1, we're going to now apply the same situation and then find the second order correction to the energy levels. And so that involves using this formula. So let me just copy out the formula for the second order correction to the energy levels. So what we're going to be doing in this video is applying this formula directly to the situation in uh, problem 6.1. So first of all, let, let us focus on the numerator. Let's try to evaluate the numerator term. So the numerator term involves this inner product. So we take the nth stationary state, and then we take the perturbation, and then we apply to the nth stationary state. And so we can turn this into an integral. We have the nth stationary state. We take the conjugate, and then we have the perturbation. And uh, for that problem, uh, if it's problem 6.1, the perturbation is alpha times the direct delta function x minus a over 2. And then we also have the nth stationary state dx. And then don't forget, the for the nth stationary state, for the infinite square well, the and stationary state is given by this expression and so we can substitute this expression for these two uh, these two terms over here and you can see we can pull out a constant we can pull out two of these square root of two over a's so in the end we have two over a and then we also have the constant alpha and in the end we're left with an integral so delta x minus a over two sine n pi over a x and then sine m pi over a x dx. And then evaluating this integral, because of the direct delta function, everything else is equal to 0 when x is not equal to a over 2. And when x is equal to a over 2, this term becomes infinity. And so in the end, after we evaluate this integral, we're just left with this, this expression here evaluated when x is equal to a over 2. So we have sine n pi over a times a over 2, and then sine m pi over a times a over 2. And so obviously this just becomes n pi over 2, and this just becomes m pi over 2. So we have n pi over 2 and m pi over 2. And you can see that for this particular expression, for this particular expression, if either n or m is an even integer, then we're going to get 0. So for this term here to not be equal to 0, both n and m are odd numbers, so that both of them must be odd. And when both n and m are odd, you can see that the sign terms, they're both equal to 1, and in that case, uh, this entire expression is just equal to 2 alpha over a. And so this is how you evaluate the expression in the numerator. And now that we've evaluated the expression in the numerator, we're ready to substitute it back inside this summation sign. So it seems like I'm out of space, so let's open a new page. So the second order correction to the energy levels is just equal to the sum, where m is not equal to n. And then we will just substitute in the expression 2 alpha divided by a. And then we need to square this entire term, so don't forget there's a square. And we also have this denominator term. And also keep in mind that just now we found that uh, this numerator term is only equal to a non-zero non number if n and m are both odd. So here I'm already implicitly assuming that n is odd, and all the m terms here are also odd. So if n is not odd, if n is even, then this entire term is zero. So there are no second order correction for the case when n is even. And also here, uh, all the m terms are odd because for the m terms that are even, uh, this entire term is just equal to zero. So we're dealing with the case where both n and m are odd. So just keep that in mind. And then now moving on to the denominator, we have the nth and energy level minus the mth energy level. So for the nth energy level, we have uh, the formula n square pi square h bar square divided by 2ma square. So we got this from chapter 2. So now I can just substitute this into the denominator. So we have n square pi square h bar square divided by 2. Uh, and then instead of m, m for mass, I'll just write m naught because we're already using m over here uh, to denote the uh, the index variable, so in order to prevent uh, any confusion, 
I'll just use m0 instead for the mass. So a square. Now here we have minus m square. So this m is for the uh, index variable. m square pi square h bar square divided by 2 m. And this m here is, stands for the mass. And then a square. And so this is what we have so far. And then we can simplify this by removing some of the constants. We can pull them outside of the summation term. So for this term in the uh, numerator, we have 4 alpha squared divided by a squared. And then for these terms in the denominator, we have 2 m a squared. So instead of m not now, I will just go back to m because that's the symbol we usually use to represent mass. I just used m not here to prevent any confusion arising from the fact that we're use also using m for the index variable. So 2 mass a squared and then divided by pi squared h bar squared. And this will be multiplied to the summation sign. And then all that's left inside is just n squared minus m squared. And you can see we can simplify some of these terms. And this 2 and 4, they become 8. So right now we have 8m alpha squared divided by pi squared h bar squared. And then for this term over here, 1 over n squared minus m squared, I'm going to uh, rearrange this term into something like this. So 1 over 2n times 1 over n minus m plus 1 over n plus m. So you can add these two terms back together and divide it by 2n. You'll see that this entire expression is just the same as this. So this is just a different way of rewriting 1 minus n squared minus m squared. So now I can substitute this here inside the uh, for the uh, summation sign. So we have 1 over n minus m plus 1 over n plus m. And so this is what we have so far. And so continuing on with our simplification, you can see that we have a 2 over here, so we get a 4 instead. So right now we have 4m alpha squared divided by pi squared h bar squared divided by n. And then we have this summation sign of two terms. So first we have 1 over m plus n. And then instead of writing 1 over n minus m, I'm going to write this as minus 1 over m minus n. So all I'm doing is flipping the sign in the denominator. And so this is what we have so far. And now the challenge is to find a way to evaluate this summation term. And it turns out we can actually get something uh, that looks pretty nice for this term. It actually turns out that this term over here is equal to negative 1 over 2n. And now I'm going to show you how we can uh, reason our way through this term to obtain this uh, this expression. And once we get this, we can just combine it with what we have so far, and that will give us our answer. And so for the rest of this video, let's focus on how we can uh, go from this expression to negative 1 over 2n. So the expression we need to evaluate at this point is this expression. And then also recall that we're only dealing with the case where n and n are both odd numbers, because if either one of them is an even number, then everything will just be equal to zero. So we're only dealing with the case where m and n are both odd. And so first of all, since we know n is an odd number, then n must be equal to 2l minus 1, where l is some integer. So that we can always express an odd number in such a way. So uh, this is, uh, so this just means n is an odd number. And now to evaluate this expression here, we're going to break this up into two parts. First of all, let's focus on Let's focus on the first expression, the sum of 1 over m plus n. So what does this look like when you actually add out all the terms? So we start from m is, so recall m uh, can only take on odd values. So we start off with m is equal to 1, so 1 plus, uh, 1 over 1 plus n, and then 1 over 3 plus n, and then 1 over 5 plus n, and so on. And then it keeps on going until it reaches to a point n minus 2 plus n. So n minus 2 is the odd number right before we reach n. And then once we reach n, so theoretically, if you just keep on going with this sequence over here, we reach a term that goes like n plus n. But this term cannot exist because m cannot be equal to n. So we just keep on going from 1, 3, 5, all the way up to n minus 2. And then we skip the term where, uh, where m is equal to n. And then we keep on going. We have n plus 2 plus n and so on. And then it keeps on going all the way to infinity. And so this is the pattern of this first term over here. So writing out this pattern is going to be useful later on, because later on we'll see that a lot of the terms can be cancelled out uh, from the terms that arise from this expression over here. And so this is what we have so far. 
and you you can see that over here there are actually L minus one terms. So there are L minus one terms and then we skip this term and then we keep on going on forever. And so this is for the first expression. Now we do the same thing for this second expression. So the second expression is slightly more complicated. So we have M minus N. And so once again, let's try to visualize what exactly this term will look like when we actually add each and every single one of the terms. So we start off with M is equal to one. So we have one over one minus N and then we have one over three minus n, and then, so that's not n, that's m, so three minus n, and then one over five minus n, and so on. And this keeps on going all the way until you reach n minus two minus n, so that n minus two is the odd number right re before we reach n. And then also, once again, m will never be equal to n because m we cannot be equal to n by definition. And so we do not have this n minus n term, which is a good thing, otherwise we'll get uh, 1 over 0, which is undefined, so this term does not exist. So first of all, we have this first block of terms. We have all these terms here, all the way from 1 to n minus 2. And then once we reach n minus 2, the next should be n, but we're skipping that one. And so the next term that follows up is 1 over n plus 2 minus n. And then we keep on going, 1 over n plus 4 minus n. And then we keep on going all the way to 1 over 2n minus 1 minus n. And then we have 1 over 2n plus 1 minus n. So you can see that this is an odd number. And then we move on to the next odd number, which is just 2n plus 1. And then that will keep on going all the way to infinity. And there's a good reason why I've written out everything like this, because now you will see that everything can actually be uh, cancelled out with each other. Because, uh, let me just move on to the next page. Because uh, now that rewriting the expression over here, you'll see that they actually can, they, you can actually cancel uh, most of the terms out with each other. So for the first, uh, for this first block over here, let's just simplify some of the terms. We have 3 minus n, 5 minus n, all the way to this term, you have n minus 2 and then minus n. So that's just negative, uh, 1 over negative 2. And so that's this first block of terms. And then you'll also notice that there are L minus one terms over here, where L is the L that arises from here. And so we have L minus one terms over here. And then next up we have one over N plus two minus N. So that's just one over two. So that's one over two. So you can already see that this will necessarily cancel out with this. And then everything just keeps on going uh, in a similar manner. We just plus two every time for the, de uh, for the denominator. So the next term, one over N plus four minus N, that's just 1 over 4, and then it keeps on going, and then you can see that this term will cancel out with this term, this term will cancel out with the term that is supposed to uh, come before this term, and so on. So they, you can always pair every term up so that they will always cancel each other up. And then we have L minus 1 terms over here, so this cancellation only extends up to the point uh, 1 over 2n minus 1 minus n. So you, so you now see why I, uh, why I specifically I wrote down this expression. And then we have 1 over 2n plus 1 minus n, so that's just n plus 1, and so on. And so for this expression, I should write this as n minus 1. And n minus 1, once again, this expression cancels out with this term. So this is, you can see that we start from 1 over 2, which cancels out with this, and then we have 1 over 4, which cancels out with the term behind. And then each successive term cancels out with each term uh, that comes to the left of the previous term that we just cancelled out, all the way to 1 over n minus 1, which cancels out with this last term. So everything over here is just equal to 0. They, none of it exists because they all cancel each other out. So all we're left with now is this 1 over n plus 1. And as you know, by the nature of this uh, of this summation, the terms just keep on going. We have 1 over n plus 1, and then we, the next term is just 1 over n plus 2 plus 1. So we just move on to the next odd number, and so on. And you can see that starting from 1 over n plus 1, they actually match with all the terms over here. And don't forget, this is we are actually subtracting this one, uh, this summation term. So you can see that every next term that arises over here, 1 over n plus 1, the next term is just 1 over n plus 3. So this term is just 1 over n plus 3. And then we have 1 over n plus 5. And since we're subtracting this uh, summation term, so since we're subtracting the summation term, uh, all of these terms, they actually all cancel out with all these terms here that remain, except for this one term, because it doesn't exist. So you can see over here, 
uh, over here we had to skip this one over n plus n term because m is not equal to n. But over here in this remaining series that uh, that remains after all the cancellation that came before, this one over n plus n term does exist because this will correspond to the case uh, where m is just equal to 3n. And so for this remaining uh, series over here, all the terms, they will all be cancelled out with all the terms that you find over here, except for the 1 over 2n term, because there is no term for it to cancel out, because there is no 1 over 2n term for this first summation term. And so you see that everything, everything cancels out except for the 1 over 2n term. And so that's why for this summation term, the only term that exists is this minus uh, 1 over 2n. And so going back here, this is why this summation term is equal to negative 1 over 2n. And so now, now that we've gotten this out of the way, we can now apply this result. And then we have negative 1 over 2n squared. So this cancels out, gives us a 2. And so rewriting this, uh, let's rearrange this in a nicer way. So we have negative 2, and then we also have an m. And then we have a bunch of square terms, so let's group them up together. And then squared. And so there we have it. This is the answer for the second order uh, correction to the energy levels.